Welcome to the presentation for BS2002 Molecular Biology. In this presentation, we are going to talk about phospholipase D1 and beta 2, their relationship with insulin secretion as well as the methods and results used and obtained respectively within the public medical article role of phospholipase D1 in glucose-induced insulin secretion in pancreatic beta cells. When glucose enters the bloodstream, it causes the beta cells within the islet of Langerhan, which are located in the pancreas, to secrete insulin. The higher the concentration of glucose present in, within the bloodstream, the more insulin will be secreted in order to lower the blood glucose level to a normal level. This article investigates whether phospholipase D1, PLD1, is involved in glucose-induced insulin secretion as well as investigating the kinds of intracellular signals that are related to PLD1 in pancreatic beta cells. Phospholipase D1 is an enzyme which converts phosphatidylcholines into phosphatic acids and choline. The en this enzyme does this by a process known as hydrolysis, which is where water is added to a substance in order to break it up into two separated molecules. This investigation found that an increase in blood glucose level increases the activity of PLD1, which in turn increases insulin secretion by activating beta 2, a regular of insulin ex exocytosis, and is also required for the regulation of insulin gene expression. In this investigation, the beta cells used were from the pancreas of transgenic mice. These cells have been genetically modified so that they could produce insulin in a regular manner in response to varying concentrations of glucose. In order to determine the roles of PLD1 and beta 2 in insulin secretion, multiple techniques were used such as liquid scintillation, counting, and polymerase chain reaction. Each experiment was repeated at least 3 to 5 times in order to produce a more reliable result. The following slide will describe the methods used to determine both the PLD1 activity of the cells and the beta 2 expression within the cells when there is an increase in glucose level. In order to determine the PLD activity, the cells were radioactively labeled overnight with tritium palmitic acid in the medium. They were then treated with glucose and incubated for 30 minutes. The lipids were extracted and separated by using thin layer chromatography. The PBT bands were then identify and scrap off the plate. They were then counted using a liquid scintillation counter. The PLD activity was measured based on the formation of tritium PBT from tritium palmitic acid via PLD. Tritium PBT is a combination of phosphatylbutanol and tritium. Tritium is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen which is used as a radioactive labor. The radiation from these isotopes can be detected by using a liquid scintillation counter, therefore measuring the amount of tritium BBT product and thus the PLD activity. In order to measure the effects that PLD1 have on beta-2 gene expression real-time polymerase chain reaction, transfection and small interfering RNA techniques were used. For real-time PCR, the RNA was first extracted from the cells then mix up with Oclear 16 Premier and reverse transcriptase, then incubated. The transcribed product were then mixed with a set of Premiers, then and tag DNA polymerase, then amplified. Glucose was then added at a different times during the reaction. When finished, the products were then separated and analyzed using gel electrophoresis. For transaction, the cells were transfected with wild types of inactive mutants of PLD1. Two days after the transfection, cells were treated with a high concentration of glucose for 24 hours. SIRNA was used to knock down the targeted genes. The cells were then transfected, lysis and assayed for insulin secretion. Here are the results obtained for the experiment measuring PLD activity. As mentioned earlier, PLD activity was measured based on the formation of radioactively labelled tritium PBT. As can be seen on the graph, there is little over twice as much PLD activity in the cells that were treated with glucose, glucose positive, than there was in cells that were not treated with glucose, glucose negative.
This shows that PLD activity is increased whenever there is an increase in glucose concentration. These results, as well as the following set of results shown, are the mean values obtained after the experiment was repeated three times in order to show a more reliable result. The small lines above the bars on the graph represent the standard error obtained from the methods used to obtain the data. For example, the accuracy and precision of the equipment used, etc. Here are the results obtained for beta-2 expression. Graph A shows the amount of beta-2 gene expression when treated with glucose for 24 hours. As can be seen from the graph, beta-2 gene expression increased whilst treated with glucose throughout the 24 hours, increasing to over 4 times the amount of expression after 24 hours than the control. Graph B shows the amount of beta-2 gene expression when treated with glucose and wild type or inactive mutants of PLD1 for 24 hours. When not treated with glucose, there is little to no beta-2 expression. However, when treated with glucose, beta-2 gene expression had increased dramatically, with the highest expression shown with RPLD1, followed by VEC, which is half as much as RPLD1, then followed by DNPLD1, which has the least amount of expression of the three. The beta actin shown above the graphs are the control substances used in order to increase the reliability of the results shown. These graphs show that beta 2 gene expression is affected by both glucose levels and PLD1 activity, and show that both PLD1 and beta 2 expression are linked. Here are the results shown for the effect of beta 2 expression on insulin secretion. Graph C shows the amount of insulin secretion after cells were treated with glucose for 24 hours as well as 1 or 2 butanol. As can be seen on the graph, the amount of insulin secretion was not affected too much when the cells were treated with 2 butanol. However, when treated with 1 butanol, the amount of insulin secretion is decreased. This is because 1 butanol is an inhibitor of PLD1 and therefore decreases the amount of beta 2 expression which results in the decrease in insulin secretion. Graph D shows the amount of insulin secretion after the cells were transfected with varying concentrations of PLD1 siRNA for 48 hours, then treated with glucose for 24 hours. As can be seen from the graph, the amount of insulin secretion decreases as the concentration of PLD1 siRNA increases. This is because PLD1 siRNA depletes the amount of PLD1 and therefore decreases the amount of insulin secretion due to a lack of beta 2 expression. Based on the results obtained, it is reasonable to conclude that PLD1 activity increases whenever there is an increase in glucose. This in turn causes an increase in beta 2 expression, which in turn increases insulin secretion, thereby decreasing the blood glucose level down to a normal level and thus decreasing the PLD activity. This makes PLD1 an important regulatory enzyme in insulin secretion. Without PLD1, it is not possible to regulate the expression of beta 2 effectively and therefore the cell cannot react appropriately to the increase in blood glucose concentration. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation and we thank you for watching.